now that we've covered that, let's talk a little bit about the GI tract concepts, starting with the foregut, midgut, and hindgut. So the GI tract is divided into the three regions we just talked about, the foregut, midgut, and hindgut. And each of these regions has their un a unique blood supply and a unique set of uh, nerves that innervate it. The reason why they each have a specific blood supply is because if we look back to embryology and a primitive GI tract, the foregut's located here, the midgut here, and the hindgut here. And because they're located in different regions embryologically, they also have different blood supplies that promote their growth. Let's talk a little bit about each of these subdivisions, starting with the foregut. So the foregut starts in the distal esophagus and ends in the proximal duodenum. And it also includes some accessory organs like the liver, pancreas, and gallbladder. So I'll circle essentially where the foregut is in our body right here on the picture to the right. This, the artery that supplies this is the celiac trunk, which we'll talk about a lot more in our stomach section. And the parasympathetic nerve that supplies innervation to this region is the vagus nerve. Now, moving on to the midgut, the midgut supplies the distal duodenum, so the last part of the duodenum, to the proximal two thirds of the transverse colon. So it's essentially this region that I've highlighted here. And instead of the celiac artery, the superior mesenteric artery supplies this region. And again, the vagus nerve supplies the midgut, just as it did the foregut. Our last region, the hindgut, uh, travels from the distal one-third of the transverse colon to the upper anal canal, which is highlighted to your right. And this is supplied by the inferior mesenteric artery. And instead of the vagus nerve supplying innervation to this region, we have pelvic splanchnic nerves supplying the innervation. I want to make a point here. We started with the distal esophagus and the up and all the way through the upper anal canal. Keep in mind that the GI tract, the oral cavity, and the lower anal canal have different arterial supplies and epithelial linings. They're technically not part of the embryologic GI tract, but we will go over them in this lecture as we move forward. Here's a chart basically outlining all of the information we discussed so far. I know this section more than others is somewhat rote memorization, and I apologize for that. I promise we have a lot of useful mnemonics and a lot of conceptual ideas coming forward. But for this, this is important to know. You need to know the arterial supply and the innervation for each of these subsections of the, the GI tract. So this is important, and this is for your learning opportunity later if you need to look it over. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content.